In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just a few words on this first Saturday of September here in Benito, Oregon, 2019. A very happy day because Our Lady did ask at Fatima that we fulfill the five first Saturdays, however way possible. If you don't have that Mass, you make spiritual communions. And make whenever you have the Mass, make that your first Saturday devotion. But normally, it should be the first Saturday of every month consecutive, consecutively received five times in a row in reparation for sins against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So Our Lady has a special uh, mark on this day. And on this day, little Joseph, you're going to receive the living God. We're all going to receive communion today. And for all of us, let's make it like our first communion. But for Joseph, it really is your first communion. So this is a very special day because... God himself, who created heaven and earth, God himself, who made the angels and all the mountains and the whole entire universe, becomes your food in this Holy Communion. And this should humble us exceedingly, that God should come down to us as our food. It's already so much that he came down as a little baby in Bethlehem and died on the cross. It's already so much that he left us, his mother and our guardian angels, and created the whole universe to be the road for us to go to heaven. But this king, this giant running the way, as the Psalms say, remember St. Christopher carried the child Jesus across the river. And our Lord made it very clear to St. Christopher it's not so much you carrying me as I holding you up in existence. So when you receive our Lord, Joseph, it's not going to be so much you carrying our Lord as, him, as he picking you up. He's the good shepherd. He picks you, the little lamb, we're all little lambs, and he puts a, us on his shoulders so he can carry us to heaven. That's what he wants to do. But we have to be willing, we have to cooperate, we have to desire to see the face of God, we have to desire to keep his commandments, we have to desire to love him and pray to the Virgin Mary, his mother, to really love God. And how do we show we love God? If you love me, Christ said, keep my commandments, keep my commandments. Now Joseph, you, you told me the Ten Commandments, you know them by heart and you know them well. But as you get older, you're going to understand more deeply what they really mean on the good points and on the dark points. That we, for example, keep holy the Lord's day, the third commandment. Keep holy the Lord's day. We really sanctify it. We really put Sunday as sacred and give an hour of prayer when you don't have mass with the family, the rosary, spiritual <laughs> reading, and you avoid manual work. That's the positive side. And the negative side is we don't do manual work on Sunday and you don't waste it away on uh, trivial, trivial things. But we must make God that time. And normally it's by the Mass and Holy Communion. So we must love the commandments and not see them as just, uh, oh, I can't do this and I can't do that. And the straight jackets against my freedom. That's a foolish, modern way of thinking. But the commandments are actually, they are actually highways, it's a highway of true freedom to run in the love of God's commandments towards heaven. And to run, it's a lot easier to run on the pavement than through the thick brush, right? You can go much faster on hard pavement than on sand even, heavy, thick sand. So... The commandments are the easiest way to run to heaven. And we must love them and love our Lord. And ask the Virgin Mary, who comes down in this Mass with the angels, ask her to give you and all of us a great love of our Lord, to really love Him above all things, to really love His commandments, 
And love of God means we must hate what offends Him. We must hate what offends Him. And the sin, the sin is what offends Him. And there are, all, there are all sorts of sins. Sins against all the virtues. Sins against all the commandments of God. There are all levels of sin. But the highest sins, the most serious sins, are those which attack Himself. The first three commandments concern God. The, the last seven commandments are about our neighbor. So, uh, the sins that go against the first commandment are the most serious. And these are the biggest sins of today. There's all, all sins, but the biggest sins of today are those that attack God by apostasy. Abandoning the true religion for a false religion. That is one of the gravest, horrible sins. And also sins against the faith. To attack the faith. Or to compromise the faith. And that's our battle right now. Is That's why we have mass here in this house. That's why. Normally we should be in the local diocesan parish. But the local diocesan parish is in the hands of the modernists. And they've claimed to be obedient to the Pope, who himself is pushing modernism and the destruction of Christ's kingship. So we're living in this crazy time when even the Popes are lending a hand to smashing the faith. But he's still the Pope. It's just a so awkward a situation we are in. But God put us in these days. And that doesn't justify any of us to go soft on the faith. We must fight for the truth. Like Archbishop Lefebvre did. He thought he would have 250 bishops with him at the time of the council. He thought at least 250 bishops will rise up against this. No problem. But when all the dust settled, it was just Archbishop Lefebvre standing and Bishop de Castro Mayor. That's it. To defend the Catholic faith against the destruction of the modernists. And the modernists were bishops, cardinals, and even the modernisms soaked into the head of these modernist popes. So we're living in a real nightmare. And it's as long as God wants. We don't know how long this is going to go. Normally we should at least be in our local Society of St. Pius X chapel. But why aren't we? Because the leadership is caving in to Vatican II. I'm not saying is caving. They have caved in. They have accepted the new mass is legitimately promulgated. You can't do this. That's like saying abortion can be justified. You can't accept the new sacraments as, as all valid and legitimately promulgated. They're not. They're at least doubtful, said Archbishop Lefebvre. At least doubtful. Maybe they're all, some can be valid, some invalid. But we don't, you can't tell. Archbishop Lefebvre said these bastard sacraments, you don't know what they are if they really give grace or not. And most of the time, he says, they don't give grace. They shut the fountain of grace. Archbishop Lefebvre said that. He said they're sterile. They do not sanctify because they're, they're played with, they're tampered with, and many times invalid, more and more. And the leadership of the Society of the Tenth, this is very, very sad. And it's, it's horrible to see, but this is what's happening. This is why we're not in our local SSPX chapel either. Because they've accepted Vatican II in the so-called light of tradition. And once you've done that, you've caved in. You've, you've surrendered to the enemy completely. So if we go with that, we are contributing to the destruction of the Catholic Church. Have that very clear. That's why... We, the priests of the Catholic resistance, the few left throughout the world, refused to go along with the destruction of Christ's kingship, the destruction of the Catholic faith, destruction of the real Tridentine Mass by compromising with Vatican II, the new Mass and the new religion. By a false obedience, by a false obedience, we will destroy the Church, said the Judeo-Masons over a hundred years ago. And now they're doing it. They're succeeding. How'd they get all the priests in the 70s and 80s to say the new Mass and just go along? 
Obey your bishop. Obey the pope. Obey, obey, obey. How do they get all the SSPX priests to go along? Obey Bishop Follet. Obey Bishop Follet. Obey Bishop Follet. And many sneaky things have happened which are very ugly, that are very wrong, opposed to justice, opposed to charity, opposed to our founder, Archbishop Lefebvre. Just one example. One example. In 2006, it was very clear. It had to be the general chapter. All the priests voted and made an election on where to go with Rome. And it was very clear in 2006 and all the time previous, we don't make a, a practical agreement with Rome until Rome comes back to Catholic tradition, until Rome professes the faith. And then in 2012, that was subverted. And it said, now we proceed to approve and determine to make this agreement with Rome, the normalization. And in 2018, last year, all the authority was taken away from the chap general chapter and given to the superior general. And he alone makes that decision. And that was just one small practical example of the overthrow and revolution within the SSPX. Now everything is on the decision of the superior general. And that is not how Archbishop Lefebvre set up the Society of St. Pius X. That's a small example. And you might say, well, that's just all politics within the SSPX. Yes, it is. But it hinges on the faith. Because where Bishop Follet is clearly going is right into the arms of the conciliar church. Why else would he tell a cardinal, cardinal, um, a cardinal in Rome, why would he tell him after he saw a new mass done with traditional vestments, nice incense, Gregorian chant facing the altar, Bishop Fillet told Cardinal Cassin, I forget his name, but he told him, that if the Archbishop saw this new Mass done most conservatively, he would not have taken the steps he took. And that's false. Absolutely false. And it's an insult to Archbishop Lefebvre. Archbishop Lefebvre said, even if the new Mass is said facing the altar in Latin, it is still poisonous. It'll make you lose the faith. And he also even warned, you don't go to stay away from the Latin Mass where it is properly done, but said by priests who compromise the faith. That's him who says it, not me. And I back him, of course. But he's the one that set that tone. So that's how much we must love our Lord. You don't compromise and you don't embrace error. You don't embrace what offends our Lord. And even worse, to invoke the Virgin Mary. I'll talk about this another day because it's getting long. But just in summary, it is a horrible thing to insult the Mother of God. To call upon her to bless these three rosary crusades, which were not for the consecration of Russia, which were not for the fulfillment of Fatima, but to bring about this suicide mission of, ex of the uh, putting the new Mass on a level with the Tridentine Mass and then lifting the so-called excommunications, which well, there was no excommunication in the first place. And to call the Virgin Mary to bless this cannot but bring a punishment on the Society of St. Pius X. And it is a punishment because they're being blinded. Blinded by not seeing the horror and the danger and the destruction of what they've done and are going into right now with the conciliar church. So we need to pray and fear ourselves and tremble and beg the Virgin Mary, keep me, O Blessed Mother, faithful to Catholic tradition and no compromise and love our Lord with my whole heart and all my soul and all my mind. That means we must hate what Christ hates. We must love what Christ loves, hate what Christ hates. Love what the Virgin Mary loves, which is her whole son, and hate what she hates. And the Virgin Mary have it very clear. She hates all heresy, all apostasy. She hates all sins against the faith, all sins that offend God. She hates Vatican II. She hates the new Mass. She hates the indult Mass because it's, it's a decoy of mockery against her son. She hates all compromise with Vatican II. 
and the new sacraments and the new rites and the new this and the new that. She hates it all. Because if anyone has embodied perfectly the words of the Holy Ghost, I have loved justice and hated iniquity, it is the Virgin Mary. Yes, she's tender. Yes, she's most sweet. Yes, she's most loving and beautiful beyond description. And because of that, she hates perfectly what offends and goes against her divine son. And that's our problem, us modern men. We don't know how to hate because we don't know how to love. We don't know how to hate evil and sin and compromise, so we just try to go along and shake hands. And the de and Archbishop Lefebvre warned us to shake hands with the modernists is doing the work of the devil. And people now, the, the Society of St. Pius X priests say, oh, Archbishop Lefebvre was extreme. He was hot-headed at that moment. He wasn't uh, in his right mind at that moment. And he was getting old. False. Archbishop Lefebvre understood perfectly to shake hands with modernists is to shake hands with the devil. You don't deal with them until they profess, Joseph, the Ten Commandments, like you did, the, act, the, the Baltimore Catechism, the questions and answers that you knew very well, until they can profess that faith and accept the anti-modernist oath and the syllabus of errors and Pashendi and the kingship of Christ, then we, we, Archbishop Lefebvre said not even make an agreement, but he said you don't even discuss with them until they profess the faith. And that's all been chucked out the window now. Why? Because we modern mishmash, spineless jellyfish, we don't know how to hate properly because we don't know how to love properly. And who's going to teach you and I how to love really and love correctly and properly? It's the Virgin Mary. She teaches us and she will inflame us if we ask her. And today, Joseph, she's going to give you through the priest the child Jesus to hold in Holy Communion. She's going to give you the dead body of our Lord, well, not dead, but living, but the body of our Lord mangled and ripped up by the scourging in the crown of thorns. You're going to hold him in your arms at Holy Communion. She's going to give you the resurrected body of Christ the King in all his glory in Holy Communion. This is who we receive. So let's ask the Virgin Mary, inflame my heart, O Blessed Mother, that I might really love you and love thy Son and that means love the faith he gave us and hate anything that shadows compromise against the holy Roman Catholic faith of tradition as handed down as he received it. He gave it to us, Archbishop Lefebvre, and your parents gave it to you, and we got to be willing to die for it. O Mary conceived without sin. Pray for us in every course. O Mary conceived without sin. Pray for us in every course. O Mary conceived without sin. Pray for us in every course. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.